3.23 changes everything. It's the biggest Star Citizen patch before the 4.0 release. It introduces new tech such as the Cloud Tech, Vulkan, and Upscalers. To begin with, we take a look at the CPU performance using the 1300K paired with the 8200MHz fully tuned. To kick things off with the CPU review, let's take a look at how we perform in Lorville doing the Lorville run, with the results being the average of the five runs we're doing for each take. DirectX 11 and Vulkan are virtually the same in Lorville, but if we dig a little bit deeper into the the frame time, we can see that Vulcan has way less stutters up to the 40 milliseconds. And the peak stutters are much shorter in comparison to DirectX 11. This will come off as feeling much more smoother and much more consistent, even though the frame rates are virtually the same. But how does Vulcan do this? Now, when I run Vulcan, it felt smoother, but I noticed something minor. And I felt that Vulcan had a minor high input latency. Yes, if we zoom in a little bit deeper into the actual frame time, we can see that Vulcan has a little bit of a different frame time behavior compared to DirectX 11. It seems like that Vulcan is actually waiting one frame or two for the CPU to catch up before for pushing the work to the GPU. This can help in preventing large stutters because the CPU, because the GPU has something to work on, but it can also result in a feel of less responsiveness. For a lot of people, they won't notice this latency because it could be potentially just one or two frames. But for me, I'm super sensitive. I definitely noticed there was a minor input delay with Vulkan. Let me know in the comments if you can notice or feel the latency in Vulkan. But how does it compare again the previous patches. Let's roll back in time all the way to patch 3.18. You can see that 3.18 actually performs way better than all the previous patches here in Lorville. This is because back then we had the old Lorville city architecture for those who can remember which looked completely different from what it looks today. And in 3.19 the latest Lorville cityscape was introduced and performance dropped massively. But over patch over patch we can see that the the Lorville performance has actually improved. So the question would be, what kind of performance can we expect when Vulkan multi-threading is enabled? Leave your thoughts in the comments on what you think the performance will be with Vulkan multi-threading enabled. And if you like this kind of analysis, then please subscribe and leave your comments and do the, all the SEO stuff. Now for the Era 18 results, we can see that Vulkan is taking a decent lead over DirectX 11 with 8% improvement on the 1% lows and roughly 6% on the average. Rolling all the way back to 3.18, we can see that actually overall, patch over patch, the 1% low has essentially not improved that much overall. And we're seeing a regression in performance. However, even though the previous patches are better in terms of the average and 1% low, if we reveal the frame time, you can see that Vulcan has a way better frame pacing and less stutters than the previous patches. Jumping to the Cloud City Orison, Vulcan is doing better, marginally so, than DirectX 11. Time traveling back to the previous patches, we can actually see a positive performance improvement patch over patch in Orison, especially on the 1% low. In combination with smoother frame pacing and better FPS, Orison feels absolutely great. Staying in Orison, let's crank the resolution to 4K and go all the way up the elevator to the rooftop of the spawn. We are taking a look at how the 4090 performs Forms with the different cloud setting modes and DLS configurations. If you want to copy this benchmark test, go all the way to the rooftop after you leave the Habs and go to the logo and stay in the middle of the circle. Make sure you have the lamppost on the top right of the corner. This way you're going to ensure that you are always looking at the same cloud setup. Take a look at the results. The 4090 is a 4K beast, is able to run clouds at very high with DLS set at quality and still be CPU bound. 
around. Taking a deep dive into the GPU load, we can see there's still an additional 30% performance left over in the 4090. When we set the clouds at very high, that's when we become 100% GPU bound, where we drop 18% in performance by disabling DLS quality. Taking a look at photo mode, we're essentially doubling the FPS with DLS quality. With this said, how does the DLSS impact the actual visuals? Now, I did record at the rooftop, but due to the saturation of colors, it's very hard to see the performance differences with the different settings. So let's take a look at the visual impact of the different cloud settings in Microtech. Using photo mode as reference, we can actually see that photo mode with DLSS actually has a more stable image. It looks better and it performs better. So there's no reason not to have DLS enabled if you're running Star Citizen and if you want to max out the settings. And with the 4090, you can actually run it pretty well with just about 60 FPS when DLSS is enabled. Moving to very high, you can actually see that with DLSS, there's actually less noise over the horizon of the cloud. Meanwhile, the cloud that is by itself has slightly more noise. When I was playing, I did prefer to have DLSS enabled with higher frame rates and the visual the noise was much better in my overall experience. So if you want to run at 120 FPS with the 4090, just put on DLS, clouds is very high and you're good to go. But game day, what about the 7800X3D? How does that perform against the 1300K with this new patch? So let's just compare the 1300K against 10 pound 42's 7800X3D. 10 pound 42's has a completely non-tuned platform, which will give you a good overview of what the average experience would be with the 7800X3D when it's not tuned. For the results, the 1300K is 50% faster on 1% low and 37% faster on the average. You can definitely feel that. Take a look at the frame times. It is a wavy ocean on the 7800X3D and this is also the experience I've had many times in the past when I run my own 7800X3D. Meanwhile, the 1300K hardly has any stutters. Meanwhile, there are stutters almost every 10 seconds consistently on the 7800X3D. This is because the X3D chip has a higher memory latency and when the X3D cache is not being hit and not being used, it will suffer way much more going all the way to the memory to get the data it needs to calculate, known as the AMD dip or X3D dip. And secondly, the CPU is so dependent on its boost algorithm to keep the power low and it does so by underclocking and overclocking in a cyclical manner. It goes from 4 gigahertz all the way to 5 gigahertz based on workload and temperature. These fluctuations impact the overall performance. You can also get these kind of stutters on the Intel platform if you don't lock your core clocks. This is why I always say the 7800X3D don't feel as smooth, specifically where there's a lot of things going on, whether it's battles, cities, or just a lot of things happening. So in summary, 3.23 brings in a lot of pros and some cons. But performance-wise, we're seeing a better frame pacing, both on Vulkan and DirectX 11. On the Vulkan side of things, performance can only get better from here when they enable Vulkan multi-threading. And also with the introduction of upscalers like DLSS, you can also now remove GPU bottlenecks. On the con side, the performance is down patch over patch, but obviously that's alleviated with better frame pacing. Fortunately for Vulkan, there's no HDR support and we're still CPU bound and there is increased latency. But overall, we're going towards the right direction with the overall smoother gaming experience. And as always, remember, the only thing unoptimized is your PC.